Is it possible to be insulin resistant even though you're not eating carbohydrates? Stay tuned to today's video to find out more. Welcome back my friends. My name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today we are going to dive into this topic of insulin resistance even in the absence of carbohydrates. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. If you had come to me a couple of years ago, you can even go back and watch some of my old videos. I was very dogmatic on this topic and I was convinced that people were eating too much protein people were not eating enough fat, people had incorrect meal timing. And while that, those tweaks, right, they can be helpful to some people, they are not helpful to all people. And I've worked with hundreds of people in the last couple of years where those tweaks did not fix the problem, the weight did not come off, they remained either leptin resistant or insulin resistant, and they were not eating any carbohydrates. So what gives? Well, today I have a very short snippet of a long video that I did with Dr. Jacob Montgomery, where he breaks down this science in a very, very digestible way. So that I think you can understand exactly why this phenomenon is happening to so many people. And hopefully this will help you to not feel so alone if this is the situation that you are facing. So please do check out that longer video if the shorter video is of interest to you. Leave me a comment or a question if you've got one about any of the science in this video. There is a ton of scientific data to back up everything that Dr. Montgomery says, so it's not just being pulled out of thin air, I promise. A couple things before we jump into that short little snippet. Today's video is going to be sponsored by Raw Optics. These are my day lenses, which I use to protect my eyes when I am on a phone screen or on a computer screen. I do take breaks to go outdoors very frequently without the glasses on to expose my eyes to natural light. But one of the things Dr. Montgomery and I talk about in this video is this blue light phenomenon and how when we are exposed to these lights all day, that are not the way that nature intended, how that contributes to this issue of insulin resistance. So check out Raw Optics. You can use my code CARNIVOREYOGI to save 15% off of anything on their website. Now, the second thing I want to mention is that I'm doing a 21-day leptin reset. Now, if you are 15 pounds or more overweight and you are, again, doing carnivore keto, you're working so hard on your diet, but you just can't seem to lose this weight, you might wanna check out my Leptin Reset. It's going to be a group coaching event. It will be held off of Facebook in a private community. There will be Zoom calls every single week so that you can get coaching and understand a daily video that's going to explain to you the science behind leptin resistance, how we became leptin resistant in the first place, and again, how to reverse this. Leptin is a satiety hormone, so if you are just hungry, right? That's why it's really difficult for you to lose weight and you feel like you are lacking willpower. Leptin resistance is probably playing a big part. So the link for that will be in the show notes for you guys. If you want to check that out, it's going to be a very helpful course. And my three-day circadian kickstart, which is about one-eighth the price of this 21-day reset is still 50% off for a very limited time. So if you want to get started on some of these circadian habits that Dr. Montgomery and I talk about in this video, that is also going to be linked down in the show notes for you guys. All right, enough talking from me. I'm excited for you guys to watch this short snippet and please comment below again if you have a question or maybe if you just want some validation because you have been in this situation yourself and struggling. I hope that this helps and I will talk with you again very soon. Have a great day. A metabolism thing because yeah. I know a lot of my listeners are going to latch on to like, okay, well, he was still insulin resistant yeah. even though he was following this perfect diet. Like yeah. how on earth okay, does the so, eye- yeah. Well, understand that because the master circadian clock, the su suprachiasmatic nucleus, yes. it actually has your GI system, the pancreas included, uh, receives vagal nerve stimulation, which is in the you know from the hypothalamus. So there's a direct link, not only to the pituitary gland, which which is the the master hormone pharmacy of the brain, 
Uh, so which, can, and you know, your thyroid hormones, pituitary, I mean, they're all involved in metabolism as well as ACTH, but the vagal nerve sends parasympathetic information to your GI system and particularly to the pancreas. So when you are stimulated by high energy blue or, or artificial light all day, every day, uh, you will send messages that are out of time, out of sync with your, your consumption of food. So you're going to over, you can become insulin resistant just by being blue light toxic. Okay. And, and I have multiple studies uh, in mammals that prove that. And I'm a sitting example of someone where that was the case. There's no other, there's no other explanation uh, in my particular case. But so you, you actually can overproduce insulin. You become insulin resistant without having a high carb diet. Okay. And this is, this is something that makes most doctors kind of, you know, scratch their head, but most it's, people. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And, you know, so metabolism is, and there's a book called metabolism that is influenced by ocular, your, your ocular health. And uh, so Dr. Fritz Hallwich, and I have a book, it was written in the seventies. So this guy, what he was doing, this is very interesting. It's probably one of the things that influenced me to, to really go down this rabbit hole. He was operating in a time when they didn't put intraocular lens implants in. So he removes these really mature cataracts from people that are technically blind. And he allowed them to have natural sunlight. And what he, he measured metabolites uh, before and after surgery. And what he was finding was he was correcting their metabolism. Their metabolism changed dramatically just by having natural sunlight on the in their on their retina because what he was basically doing is resetting their circadian rhythm getting natural light to the suprachiasmatic nucleus so then the master clock controls every cell in the body uh, and so they were they were able to correct some metabolic abnormalities that otherwise they really had no idea why they had and, and i think that was it is amazing and it'd be interesting study to do now only we don't do cataract surgery. We, we put implants in that block UV light and probably yeah. much of the infrared, which, you know, it's a frustrating part of my profession, but something I've tried to, I've, I've tried to push back on and I'm trying to get people to understand and give me some better circadian implants that I can use. I try to balance it just because I, I need to make a living, but at the same time, it gives me an opportunity in the traditional clinic to not only educate the patients in a different way, but also the doctors too. I've got three or four guys that, you know, are close to me. They were absolute skeptics from day one, and now they're starting to have these conversations. So just, you know, it's a grassroots effort. It definitely is. And, you know, what percentage of people, I guess, in general, would you say are blue light toxic? Would you think it's most people at this point? It depends on the age, but, yeah. but I think the majority of people uh, probably under the age of 50, um, yeah. I'd say most teenagers are already there. And, and, you know, I have three teenagers in my house and it, the majority of their friends take medication for sleep, anxiety, wow. depression, ADHD, uh, the uh, incidence of autism in yep. young people is through the roof. I mean, yep. there was just a study from Japan, I think in the last week, that showed a high correlation between screen use and autism.